What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. My phone is bouncing like crazy. There we go. My name's Greg. It is good to be back with you guys. Um, I wasn't doing videos for a while. I do have some explanation as to why I have some car troubles, and that is why I'm currently in a red Kia Soul with car seats. <laughs> Borrowing the car from a friend right now. Um, <clears throat> So that's a long story. I've got a video uh, coming out about that. You can be on the lookout for it. Nothing too wild, but it is pretty interesting. Possibly something you guys could run into as well. So definitely look into that. Uh, what I'm doing today is there's been a lot more driver deactivation stories that I've heard about. So a lot of people have been messaging me these newer ways they've been getting deactivated. I did a video months ago on driver deactivation and there was like all these crazy things like about half of them had happened to me at different points but the other half i was like man this is insane so this is an updated list these are um almost all new um with a few refreshers i would say i, I left like the most common refreshers that you'll run into <clears throat> so let's just kick it right off um the first one for driver deactivation, and this is the most obvious one, is a 4.6 or lower. Now, the reason I bring this up is because no one usually understands when this happens. Because, again, it's Uber, and they're not really super clear about... Like, I, I've been deactivated a few times. Never for anything scary. Don't worry, I'm not like this psychopath driver. Um, but, like... The times I did, what drove me nuts is it sometimes took like six or seven emails before they got back to me on what it was. So I'm going to give you that, guys these so that if something does happen, you can use probably a process of elimination to narrow these down. First one is a 4.6 or lower. Now, one thing you got to do is if you really believe one of these ratings isn't correct. Now, and how can this happen? Well, for instance, I one time got like two one stars in a row. And one of them was this group of really hammered guys that were joking the whole ride about how they're going to one star me. And then I'm pretty sure I'm like, like I said, I could prove it, but I was pretty sure they were one of the one stars because I'm not a driver that will like randomly get fed up and lash out at people. I don't cuss at people. I don't, you know, refuse to go the way they want. I accommodate to people. I really, really do. If they want to stop, I do it, even though I know I'm getting hosed. You know, whatever they want to do, I'm usually open for it. I'm, I'm precautious, you know, I'm not an idiot, but I will almost always do these things. So I, I don't really believe there's many scenarios where I deserved a one-star rating. Um, and not to, not saying that to toot my own horn, it's not like that's something I'm super proud of, my, my great rating with Uber. Like, <laughs> not going to put it on a job resume. But I just, it didn't add up. And so I emailed him and I said, hey, had these group of drunk guys they were joking about giving me a one-star rating i really think that's why i got one of them i was like if you see that there was this one profile named this because i remembered at the time it was a lot more recent i said if it was this guy's name would you mind emailing him now that he's not you know he might just be hung over but would you mind emailing him and seeing if he was one of the ones that gave me a one star and if he'd be willing to rescind it and let him know that like I'm currently unable to drive because of it. And they actually did that. So they actually reached out to him and I don't know, they never got back to me, but I was activated the next day. So I don't, you know, I didn't even need the other two to change. So, and I didn't, I should have prefaced this. So I believe you need three one-star ratings in the span of like a short period of time. I want to say like one or two weeks. It might be even longer than that. It might even be in the one month cycle now that I think about it. But if you get three one-star ratings, they boot you. Or if you get to a 4.6 or below. So if you already have a low rating and then you get a one-star that puts you under, you would only need one one-star rating, right? So that's a little thing you can do if you run into that. So a lot of times if someone's willing to admit that they were in the wrong in making that rating, uh, then you can get active like pretty, pretty quickly after that. All right, so... <clears throat> The next uh, thing, and this is a really, really severe one, and this is just something we should never do as drivers. Um, I think there's a lot of times where this seems really innocent, but to be honest, this world is really screwy, and I would say for this reason, might be good to get a dash cam. But one of the things is post-ride contact or contact in the ride that they're not comfortable with. So post-ride contact, meaning that 
you know, in an extreme case, you show up to their house later on and knock on the door and be like, I think I had a connection with you. Can we talk? People aren't going to like that. Um, or if you ask for their number and they give it to you out of innocence and then you're being a weird freaking driver and texting them saying God knows what, and then they feel really uncomfortable, they report you for that, you go inactive because they don't want drivers that are going and texting customers afterwards. Here's what I've learned from taking a lot of Ubers recently. We're not as cool as we think we are. Like, that's the honest truth. Um, I, I think, like, more often than not, I probably ended up being, like, way cornier than I really intended to be. But it's tough. You get bored out there. Um, and I, I'm seeing that as I've been talking to my drivers more and more and more, cause I've been taking a lot of rides lately that I'm like, you know, I, I'm getting annoyed and, and I feel like I'm not someone who gets annoyed easily, especially cause I understand where these drivers are coming from. But if I'm getting annoyed, I feel like that's not a good sign. So I know it's tempting to want to connect with a lot of these people, but don't just don't be. And the reason I say just don't is because it's not worth the risk. Some of you guys are probably going to leave comments and be like, Oh, but I had this great connection. Hey, I've had great connections. I have people I still do business with in my main business. Um, Uber passengers. But here's the thing. What I would do is if you really are feeling like someone wants to be friends or a business connection, let them know that. They'll understand. Be like, hey, listen, would you mind just emailing me first? Would you mind asking for my email and emailing me? And here's why. Because I can literally get suspended. And I know it sounds ridiculous. I know you're going to say you would never do that. But a lot of people say that. And then they report me. And I rely on this income too much to risk that. So would you mind texting me first? Emailing me first? Um, and I think there's nothing wrong. And I think they'll understand. Like, hey, this guy's got to protect his side hustle. So yeah, I can be, I can lower my pride and be the first person to text. I don't get why people are so freaking prideful about that anyways. Um, and that's an easy way to remain really safe and, and, uh, upstanding with someone and not risk the connection. I've had so many people in the past that I would pick up super drunk, super high. And they're like, dude, you're so dope. I want to be friends. Let's connect. And so they'd give me their number and I, and you know how often those people responded to me if I texted them? Never. Because I'm telling you, you, you might seem like the cool Uber driver at the time, but the second you're reaching out to them, once you've dropped them off, they don't think it's cool anymore. And I get that it's weird. Those people all ask for my number. But for whatever reason, then they would never text me back or anything. So I think it's a good rule of thumb for your safety, for your sanity, and for your ego to let them message you first and just explain to them why. Hey, if you really want to hang out, would you mind emailing me first? Because I just can't risk getting in trouble. Very understandable. Moving on, though. Um, documents, that should be... I'm not even going to go into that because they tell you if your documents are about to expire. In fact, they text and email you like 800 times. If you get inactive for documents, that is no one's fault but your own. Um, serious complaints. So I know a lot of people have told me, a lot of passengers, that they've reported drivers for talking about how they do drugs, even on their post post-driving time, recreationally, might even have their med card for all these people know. The thing you got to understand here is even if you're in a very awesome area like Colorado or LA where it's hippie vibes and everybody smokes and does everything they want to do, you're going to have a lot of people from the Bible Belt, from different countries where that's not a social norm. And so it might seem really normal to talk about how much pot you smoke every night. Might You might feel like such a BA dude for doing that. But for a lot of people, that's not going to fly. And they'll report you for it because right away they already think you're high or drunk while you're driving. I mean, I think it'd be really extreme for someone to talk about alcohol because it's more accepted. So, like, hopefully you didn't tell them that you're just going to have a few beers when you watch a movie when you're off your shift tonight. And then they're like, ooh, he's a psycho. He's drunk. <laughs> like, I hope that doesn't happen to you. But people are nuts always err on the side of caution, honestly, because like you're picking up so many people each day. You just can't assume that everyone's just this super dope bro. That's gonna be chill with all the things you're saying about your lifestyle. It's just life doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, so that serious complaints. Yeah. Talking about 
talking about it, obviously a, a, an even more serious complaint would be if you literally had pot or alcohol in your car and they see it. Um, that's not going to fly well. You know, God forbid you have a gun or something. Like, I literally hope none of you are that crazy. But that's the thing. There's real stories like that out there of Uber drivers whipping out a whole mason jar of weed. You know, of their open beer in the front, which maybe was a passenger's, but how do you really know? You know, and that's what I'm saying. Err on the side of caution. Don't give people's minds reasons to wander. The biggest thing is make them feel really safe. There are stories of, like, basically serial killer Uber drivers. I mean, they don't ever get away with it because they're being tracked, but, like, they've done nuts stuff. They've done sick stuff. So you don't want people to think that about you. You got to right away make them feel safe. Um, another thing is like, if you're going like 120, you're going to get reported you're going to get deactivated. Some of these things, they won't even take you back. So with the real serious complaints, like they seriously, it's like a no tolerance policy. You do it, you're done. Do you really think they care? They got drivers signing up every day. They're not worried about you. You know, that's the honest truth. Um, last thing is, uh, this one was actually one of the most shocking for me was inactive status. If you go inactive for more than I think 90 days, they deactivate your account. So, you know, one thing you got to make sure is even if you don't drive that often, if you just do holidays, uh, just make sure you're doing one ride a month at some random point, um, you know, just so that your account stays active. So those are the most important ones. I have a few others, but I think I really nailed them in some of my last activation videos. So you can search for those if you want to see some really detailed ones. Those are some newer ones that were brought to my attention. Um, but yeah, anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I will talk to you all soon.